Throwing tantrums, demanding snacks. Some preschoolers and kindergartners are struggling in the classroom. We want to help our kids out a little bit and teachers to recover from distance learning downfalls. Dr. Richard Levac is joining us with some advice that we could probably all use. Doctor, good morning. How are good you? Good morning, Raul. Good to see you. Okay, uh, now that kids are going back to school, um, there's like a whole new world of problems that we're seeing from before, right? What are those? A whole new world of problems. Well, starting with the pre-kindergarten, the little three, four, five-year-olds and young. kindergartners, what's happening is that being at home for a year or two means they haven't learned basic social skills mm. because that's what you learn in kindergarten, to sit in your chair, to wait to snack time, to share, to manage your emotions. Yep. All of that's gone by the wayside. So teachers are reporting, and that's why it's great that you're honoring teachers. Teachers are reporting when kids are, kids are coming back, they're crying, they're having temper tantrums, mm. they're demanding snacks when they want them. They're having difficulty sharing and staying quiet. Yeah. The things you're supposed to learn in kindergarten and that you don't get from home. And that age range from three to five, three to six, it's so important in, in a child's development, isn't it? And to kind of miss out on that year and a half, two years at that age is even more difficult. Absolutely, Raul. What, what researchers are finding is that children of that age group going back are a little delayed mm. in language. Apparently, it's important for a child to look at your mouth when yeah. you speak to really learn language better. And with the teachers uh, or with uh, teachers wearing masks, that's not there. That's true. So that age group is having trouble. But you know what? The young women, uh, the CDC has been monitoring emergency room visits. During mm. the pandemic, there were less emergency room visits for physical things, but more visits for mental oh. things. And more among girls. You've probably heard about the TikTok ticks. Yeah. Girl, young, young girls developing tics, and that isn't traditionally Tourette syndrome. Sure. So they're learning it from watching TikTok tics wow. and developing it probably as a way of belonging. Wow. Um, let, let's talk about, you mentioned the emotional, uh, these emotional fires, yes. right? Um, so how do we put those out? Boy, that's really tough, isn't it? Because an emotional fire, when a child melts down, when a child screams, shouts, tantrums, do you, you need time. You yeah. need time to sit down, to verbalize. You are real, Johnny, you are so angry. Yes, you're worried, you're mad. That's okay, you just cry. Mom or teacher's gonna sit with you for a few minutes till mm. you calm down. We need some patience. And w unfortunately, a mm -hmm. lot of teachers don't have time yeah. with lots of kids melting down. So parents need to be aware that children need maybe to talk about it when they come home. Structure, providing structure is important. If you can have dinner at night sitting around the table, if you can, when you're driving the kids somewhere, to ask, well, you know, Mary, how, you know, some kids worry. I don't know. Mm. Well, guess what they worry about? COVID, get them to talk, get them to express. Right. And you need time to sit and be with a tantruming kid. Wow. It, it's good that you point this out because even before the pandemic, even before these new set of troubles, uh, parents and teachers, as, uh, parents a lot of times, do, do you ignore a tantrum? Uh, do you use the positive reinforcement? Are there other options? And at what point do you use one versus the other? It's a tough decision. You have to make that call in the moment. It's a tough decision. Remember, researchers are finding punishment doesn't work. Right. Threats don't work. I, I hate to give this analogy. It'll offend somebody. But when you work training dogs, if you get mad with the dog, it just cowers. Right. You, you do it with positive reinforcement. Kids are the same. Hey, Mary, you are great. I know you're not going to hit your brother. You're just doing so well. Oh, you're such a good girl. You'll sit down. Perfect. As much positive reinforcement as possible. When there's a tantrum, if you have the time to be with the child's feelings, you're angry, you're upset, yeah. you're scared, that works better than getting irritated or mad or sending the kid to their room. We talked about the preschoolers, we talked about kindergarten, but boy, this is also affecting in their own way. Older kids, um, yes. 
uh, older kids, tweens, teenagers, it runs the gamut, really, right? So, so how do we respond to the kids as they age? Because they, you have to treat them a little bit differently. Uh, absolutely. Uh, and they're also suffering through, through this. Absolutely. The preteens, yeah. I, I told you earlier that there was a threefold increase in girls between the age of 12 and 17 going to the ER with tics. That's a nervous disorder. Ah. So working, this will pass, Raul. Yeah. We will catch up. Kids learn. But try to take time with the kids at whatever age. Talking about what they're feeling is usually a huge relief for kids. And having a parent or teacher understand how they're feeling is often enough to quieten them down. Yeah. I mean, we could take some of these lessons away and what you said, you know, it's patience and then providing that structure and the semblance of normalcy, if you will, again. Again. Uh, we'll get back there uh, eventually. Dr. Richard Levac, as always, thank you so much for your help. Thanks, bro. All right.